with us. Uh, it's always a joy to have you for the weekend. Um, you spoke a great message. Um, Thanks, Drew. Uh, Philippians 3. And what I love, actually, I really love the way you started the message of talking about oxymorons mm. <laughs> and how you said uh, one of them is a joyless Christian. And yeah. I was thinking more, as you were speaking, I was like thinking more on that, just that term. And I'm just being like, yeah, there can never be a joyless Christian um, because when you, like you said, when you become a Christ follower, you experience the joys of you experience the joy of yeah. the Lord. Um, and so, yeah, I kind of want to ask you and begin with this question of like, why are we so susceptible hmm. to believing that we can be a joyless Christian? Well, I, I, I think that when you think about the fruit of the Spirit, you mm -hmm. know, nine different things that, that are listed in Galatians, and the second one is that of joy. Mm -hmm. And I think that that should be a defining characteristic, just like love is mm -hmm. for us. Um, but I, I love churches. I think churches are incredibly Christ-like when they have joy. Mm -hmm. um, one of the reasons I enjoy coming to one and all is because there is laughter, there is joy, mm -hmm. there is this intoxicating anticipation of how is God going to show up in mm -hmm. the service this weekend. And so that's at the heart of joy mm -hmm. is that we know God's going to come through in some way for us. Yeah. He's He's got something for us. When we open up his word, he's going to have something for us. So um, why do I think that people have kind of accepted the fact that they can be joyless? I think it's, it's the fact that society has beaten people mm -hmm. down mm -hmm. and we've allowed our culture uh, to dictate our actions and our behaviors. And as a result of that, um, you know, there's an old T-shirt you might remember seeing. You know, said if if you have Jesus down in your heart, then please notify your face, right? <laughs> you know, <laughs> so um, we should. It, it should be there. Should be something so distinctive about a Christ follower mm -hmm. that when a person walks away from having a conversation with with that Christ follower, that there's something distinctive and different that stands out, and it's the fact that there is a joy about them. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter what the circumstance might be. You know, I've, I've been in countless funeral homes in 40 years of ministry, and you can tell if the person was a Christian mm. just when you walk in the room because that's not the end for that person, and there is a joy that we're going to see that person again mm. because they put their faith and, and hope in Jesus Christ. Yeah. And so I do think that um, we've allowed our community and our culture to kind of change us. And we've wimped out on that. And people think they can get by with being joyless. And I don't think, I think it's a, it is an oxymoron. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Um, I think of, uh, have you ever seen this movie? I don't know if I talked about it before. Have you ever seen this movie called Bench Warmers? It's like no. a comedic film about these uh, three guys. Uh, What's the guy from Napoleon Dynamite? Yes, in that yes, movie? Uh, yes. Uh -huh. okay, okay. Yeah, and now yeah. it's coming back to me. <laughs> yes, yeah. good. Uh, they play like three like nerd uh -huh. adult nerds that um, join a little league, and they play all the other uh, little league teams. Uh -huh. And all the coaches were like bullies in the past, and so. But what's funny is, is at the end of the movie, uh, they they allow all the kids, like all the all the ones that didn't get to play. Uh, baseball, you know, the bench warmers, that's, yeah. that's their thing. Um, they have them play the final championship game and they're terrible. <laughs> I mean, absolutely <laughs> awful. But it's funny because they have such a joy uh, as they're playing yeah. it. And even the other team, like the other kids are starting to notice like, like that kid just struck out and he's like happy about it. Yeah. He's like joyful about it. He's like, what's what's going on? And then he, he does good. Like the kid who was thinking that is doing good. And the coach literally tells him like, what are you doing? You're 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 costing the game, even though they're like twenty five yeah, to zero. They're, they're up, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, it, it was just funny because yeah, all the kids are losing. They're terrible, but they're having such a good time. And as you were speaking, I was just reflecting on that. Of that's that perspective. It, it's correct. a different perspective uh -huh. uh, of yeah. the end goal. What's the what's the goal in mind? And that's what's so cool about yeah. Philippians chapter three. The end goal is that our citizenship is in heaven. Mm -hmm. And we eagerly await a savior from there. Yeah. And so that puts everything in perspective. So right. the crud and depression and things that we go through down here on earth, you know, it's it's gonna be like that mm -hmm. 
in eternity. Yeah. Uh, Kyle Eidelman at, at Southeast Christian in Louisville uh, said the other day in a sermon, he said, the trials that you're going through are going to be like in heaven. It's going to seem like one bad night at a motel. <laughs> you know, you stayed at a cruddy motel for one night. That's what you're going to be thinking about when you think about all these in- incredibly tough things that you went through in this right. life compared to what heaven's going to be. Mm. So. Right. Well, I mean, when Paul's talking about literally going upward or, or being heavenward mm-hmm. towards his pursuit, I think yeah. I think that, uh, you correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm just even thinking when you have the joy of the Lord, when you have that joy, mm-hmm. you don't even have room to think about the suffering or or almost like room to think about what was terrible. Kind of like you're saying, it's it, it's gonna feel like one day. It's gonna feel like yeah. you just had a bad hour, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or anything. But but essentially when you when you become a Christ follower and you allow the fruit of the spirit mm-hmm. to be produced out of you, yeah. um, you don't even have time to almost mourn or mm. or maybe it does become a mourning, like, oh man, yeah, I was that way, but now I'm not. And now yeah. I'm actually in the pursuit. And I actually want to talk about that too. Um, well, before pursuit, getting into priorities. Because mm-hmm. um, I feel like a lot of people will prioritize everything else but the joy of the Lord mm-hmm. or but Christian, uh, just Christianity as a whole. And and so your your point on your priorities, mm-hmm. like what does that look like in your throughout your life? Yeah, and I think that, one of the, when I think about Philippians three and I, and I think about those priorities, I do think it's easy to get wrapped up in the list. Mm, um, that's true. I mean, and part of what I think Paul is saying is, I'm sure there was a time in his life where he was really wrapped up in the list. Yeah, yeah. Or else he would not have gone through this impressive, you know, um, all these different things that he had accomplished or were part of his heritage. And so, yes, that's how a lot of people get there. Yeah. Self worth, you know. I'll, I'll. I remember some time ago being at a grocery store, and my wife and I were talking to somebody, and uh, said they were talking about their kids, and they mm-hmm. said, "Well, you know, they're all married, and they all have really good paying jobs, and uh, so we feel like uh, we've been a success in raising them." And my wife and I walked away from that conversation, and we thought, "Man, alive, that's that's what being a successful parent mm-hmm. is." Is yeah. That they they're well paid now, and that they ended up finding someone to to marry. I, I just thought, oh wow! So that was on their list, is what mm. I'm saying. Mm. And what I struggle with personally is wanting that I want to know Christ, but I don't think that that's always my highest priority. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I let other things kind of get in the way. And when I'm not careful, my pursuit of Jesus as a priority slips mm-hmm. down to number two or number three yeah, rather yeah. than number one, you mm-hmm. know, or sometimes number five, um, <laughs> yeah. you know. So I do believe that that priority is a, a constant. You know, the Bible talks about, you know, every day taking up our cross. Mm-hmm. And the, the reason we have to do that is because we we squirm off of the altar, you know. <laughs> uh, we, we don't want to... The idea of suffering and pain is yeah. not something. That's why I really wanted to bring out that Acts five passage about yeah. the early Christians. They rejoiced. Mm-hmm. They were they were so pumped up that that they got beaten, <laughs> yeah. and it's because they had seen their Lord and Savior be beaten, yeah. and so they felt like you know what, uh, he got beaten and he didn't do anything wrong. Right. He was he was doing the will of God, mm-hmm. and we've been beaten for doing the will of God, and yeah. they derived fulfillment and joy from it. It's yeah. just a really weird dichotomy correct, to think correct, about, yeah. you know? <laughs> so, but uh, it's it challenges me and my faith, right? because typically we want to get as far away from suffering and pain as we possibly can. Mm-hmm. I remember uh, Lee Strobel, author, yeah. uh, apologist, uh, he said, everything that I've ever learned, every time I have ever grown in my life was because of pain. Mm. was because of some suffering. And so when he says, I want to know Christ and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings, when Paul says that in in verse 10 of Philippians 3, he is articulating that I don't want to shy away from whatever it takes in order to get to know him better, Mm. even if it's pain. Yeah. Wow. Two things that I thought of uh, 
One was Stephen when he's martyred. Mm. Uh, as you were saying that, I just, I always yeah. think about him and when he's being martyred and the fact that he is saying what Jesus said, you know, like forgive them. They don't know what they're yeah. doing. And I'm like, you're literally yeah. being tortured. You're, you, those stones are being thrown. Oh, and then of gosh. all people who's holding the coats is Paul. And one makes me think, was mm. that, was that at least, I always try to be like, okay, what was Paul thinking in that moment? Was he being, yeah. was he, ex, was he, happy at what was going on or was this kind of like could this have been a, a place where paul is kind of going like hmm, maybe i don't hmm. wrestle with this but and i know again, he I, you know he had to think back to it after, <laughs> correct, he, correct. after he became a christian he had to think back one of the cool things about the story of stephen this is a sidelight but uh that's what this is all about yeah, right correct. so yeah yeah no uh, you're good <laughs> one of my favorite things about the the story of stephen when he was martyred is it's the only time in all the bible that we ever have Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Oh. He's he's sitting all the other times. And I told a story about my daughter, Sadie, yeah. uh, when she was in college. Um, she was a track star, too. She was a she was one state in hurdling. Uh, but I was at countless track meets. And something would happen when, you know, she'd be running the 400. Mm -hmm. And everybody starts off sitting down. But then when they come around yeah. that final turn— Everybody in the bleacher stands up. Yeah. And you cheer them across the finish line. And I think that's why Jesus is standing up. Oh. I think Stephen is about to die. Yeah. And Jesus is cheering him on. And so he's standing at the right hand of God because he's like, come on, hang in there. Press on just a little bit longer. You know, you're going to take three more hits and you're going to be with me. Yeah. You know, so... <laughs> First time, somebody made me cry. <laughs> oh, it's got, man, I, I get crying just thinking about it, oh, you know? Man. To yeah. think <laughs> the only time in the Bible that Jesus ever stood at the right hand of God. Mm. So I just, I picture it. You know, you think about Paul saying in 1 Corinthians 9, finishing the race. Right. You know, I've, yeah. I have uh, fought the fight. I've run the race. And so if, if life really is a race, mm. and God knows when we're about to hit the finish line. Right. You know? Talk about a tough time. Talk about a time when your joy is going to be taken away. And he yeah. sees Jesus standing. Correct. Uh, and I think that's what maybe gives him that momentum to to finish the race. To finish the race and to honestly, I mean, yeah, to find that joy even in the midst of that pain yeah. and suffering. That yeah. he is literally, hmm. I, I'm, I'm, I'm right there, um, and. Wow, that's huge. And it, it kind of makes even what Paul is saying that I want to I want to know the the death and resurrection of Jesus. I want to be yeah. I want to participate um, mm -hmm. in that. It yeah. makes it so much more stronger. And so I'm even thinking of your last point, the pursuit. Mm. You know, what is your pursuit then? And I don't know if you want to elaborate a little more on yeah, just like mm. Paul saying I'm pressing on. I'm pressing onward. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking heaven, heavenwardly, which I love that word. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I didn't get to go in as much detail on my depression. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I know that there might be people listening who have, especially since COVID, you know, anxiety issues and depression has skyrocketed in, in the last three or four years. And um, that was a very small part of mine, but it was a part of it. Uh, and so when I talk about, I thought about as I was talking about joyless, being a joyless Christian in mm -hmm. the opening, and I wanted, to, I wanted to come back at the end and say, you know, even though in that season I was as low as can be, mm -hmm. and, you know, it's very humbling to have your wife, you know, every few days, she was such a big help to me, but just saying, you know, how are you doing today? Mm. And, you know, or, or, you know what, what, yeah. what are you thinking about right now? Tell me what, what's on your mind. So I, I know I, I got through it because of the Lord, but also because of a godly wife that walked through that journey with me and some really close friends um, who, who reached out to me and kept checking up on me. Yeah. But I, I don't think that even though I didn't have joy in the sense that I'd had before— I still knew that God is God. Mm -hmm. I still knew that God is faithful. Yeah. I knew his words are true. And so that's why I felt like I had to just beat a path to his word. Mm -hmm. um, 
But I do want to say, I do think that there are seasons of life where they're just hard seasons. I remember yeah. when my wife's mom passed away. Uh, Beth was in her 30s, and uh, her mom was 53, and her mom was her best friend. And, I mean, you don't recover from that yeah. the next day. I mean, right. her mom was a Christian. We knew where her mom was, but it it's, it's a season. Right. And— you don't laugh as much. The joy isn't there. But just knowing from those two guys in my Bible study, uh, one of the guys put his hand on my shoulder and, and said, uh, you will get better. Mm. And as simple as that sounds, to hear it from somebody who had felt like their joy had been robbed mm. and was in the state of depression, and to hear him say, you will get better, um, really helped me. Right. Uh, and then to hear the other guy say, we'll, we'll all walk on the journey with you. Yeah. Which just shows why we always are talking about being involved in a small group. Right. And being connected because we need one another. God made us that way. I mean, God itself is a small group. He's a trinity, <laughs> you know? Yeah, you you yeah. got God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit. Yeah. And so we're wired in his image mm -hmm. and we, we need each other. We, we have to have that within the body of Christ. Yeah. I mean, that's why Paul in all his letters are, he's, he's handling the community mm -hmm. to stop bickering at each other <laughs> yeah. and to remind them of that, you know, that the trials that we're going through, yeah. we're not alone in them. And Jesus has already walked that path for us. So all we have to do is just walk with him through whatever we're going through. Yeah. And I think, uh, I think when you hear that, and being a Christian, mm -hmm. I, I, I don't think we are, we become a joyful Christian because joy is already part of the fruit of the Spirit. So if I'm a Christian, then I have, therefore yeah. I have the joy. And um, as we mature yes, in our yeah. faith, mm -hmm. I think those that fruit comes out more yes. of all nine. Yeah. But um, I just think, you know, and I don't want to equate laughter with joy. Mm. But um, the church where I served at for 30 years in Louisville, uh, Southeast Christian, um, one time someone was talking about our church, and they had listened on the radio for, for years. And the way they described our church, they said, oh, that's a church that loves to laugh. <laughs> and it was one of the greatest compliments. Yeah. Because so many people have grown up going to church where you don't you're not supposed to laugh and it's it's yeah. all serious and yeah. oh it's it's all Sit reverence. Up straight. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, sure. oh, exactly. We both did it the exact yes, same time. Yeah. It's like, oh, you know, that's that's what we think it is. Uh -huh. And I don't think God's like I don't think God's like that. And yeah. he's a creative God. Yeah. And he gave us a sense of humor. What's one of the greatest things that you look for in any friend? It's right. you want them to have a sense of humor. They have to be able to laugh at themselves and, right. and laugh with others. And so um, he he gave us that for a, a purpose. Yeah. So let's let's pick our, at ourselves sometimes for being lactose mm -hmm. intolerant or whatever right. it, it might be, you know, yeah, holding yeah. a set of flowers outside of a, a college dorm and, yeah. and what are the implications for people walking by. So... <laughs> Um, but I do think that the church should be a place of joy because yeah. the past has been forgiven and mm -hmm. the future has been settled. Right. And it is a place to come in with your sorrows, but yeah. knowing that, you know, uh, joy comes comes in after. And, yeah. and um, I mean, comedians always talk about how, why are they so funny? It was because I had to laugh through my pain or I had to, yeah. you know, turn what, my darkness, whatever it was, I had to turn yeah. it into laughter. And when you did that, you found um, a sense of reality. Mm -hmm. And I feel like essentially Christianity is that too. It can yeah. be that. Um, what Jesus went through is is gruesome and, and mm -hmm. we look at it with sorrow, but because of his resurrection, now we have yeah. eternal life. We see redemption and we see that joy is at the center of all of that. Uh this was a great one. I really love this conversation, Pastor Dave. Um, and I really loved mm. your sermon. And I feel like a lot of people are going to be mm. impacted uh, definitely by it. So thank you for sitting with me again well, thank today. Thank you. And uh, I'm, I've enjoyed the whole Philippians series. Yeah. I felt like Rory and Dawn did great. I can't wait mm -hmm. for Pastor Michael. Oh, yeah. Uh, 
this next weekend to preach on Philippians 4. Yeah. So it's one of my favorite books. So I'm I'm eating it up <laughs> and, and loving every bit of it. Yeah, no, it's good.